In fact, I am not a hollowback girl. Uh, I am not a hollowback girl. Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was me sp speaking the words of the song Hollaback Girl by, I think, Gwen Stefani. Um, and again, that's totally useless to you. So previously on the stream, we looked at Maxima and see, saw if we looked at Maxima and we s tried to see if we could use it um, to do what Mathematica does and our sort of test project uh, was our good friend, the COVID-19 virus, who I think I still have a, this guy, how's it going COVID? This is Bob COVID, by the way, personal friend. Um, he is not obviously infecting anyone. He is sort of the uh, spokes virus for the uh, rest of, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think one of your friends is inside me, Bob. But um, he is the spokes virus for the other coronavirus. So we will be looking at some statistics and um, the eventual goal is to show that uh, you can do a lot of fudging with statistics. And it's also fairly easy to show that uh, if you are fudging, you can make it look, you can, make, you can show that fudging really, you know, when someone is fudging, you can kind of show that they're inaccurate by using the same technique on a smaller number of days. Um, so we will get up to all that. The first thing we need to do is um, somehow get the data for today, which it's like a it's like a mystery every time. I don't know why we can't get it, so we will put this into. Um, um, I always have trouble finding it. I did write down that this maybe should give us the actual data that we need, the latest data. But then again, it might give us not the latest data, because or it might give us this bullshit here. Okay, so that wasn't what we wanted, but that's okay. Okay, so it's here, and you have to download it in a very special way because the people who created this web page are very special in the sense of uh, Olympics. Okay. <coughs> okay, that one was, I covered that one, so you, you can only die from the first one. All right, so somewhere over here we have confirmed deaths. It's a grizzly. I think you see the word deaths enough. It's like, yeah, whatever, people die, big deal. So I think if you click on data here, it gives you, this is the file I want. I have two copies of it already, so this will become uh, copy number three. And what I'm going to do to it is this. Uh, this is how you get the data out of it, because I've done that twice now. Um, except I'm going to have to change two to three, obviously. Let's do this. Da -da -da -da. Okay, there is our latest data. And... Okay, now I'm going to be a little bit brave here, and we're going to go... Okay, some people are in my Discord channel, by the way, if you want to go there. I'm not going to give the URL because no one's listening. Um, um, okay. Let me actually... Um, uh, so I will put down there... By the way, one of the people in my Discord has named themselves Barry Hates Me. I do not hate him. I love him. And I want to have his children. He is male, but we, we, I think we can make that work. Uh, <laughs> so my, my Discord's pretty funny, but you can't see it, so it doesn't really help you uh, any. And it is Pomodoro time, but we're going to skip it um, the first time. And uh, let's see if they want to join us on stream or not. My, my, my basically two people that I know, um, one of who uh, thinks I hate him, and the other of who um, I think I've offended because I was mentioning animal cruelty earlier. So lots, lots of fun, lots of lots of people to know. Now I'm gonna actually go back. Hang on, let me let me actually do this. So to temp covid dot text. I'm uh, gonna have to do R because we have what the fuck? That's not cool. Um. Is that the latest number? Uh, okay, I'm gonna we're gonna have to add them up and see if it's the latest number. I think it is, but I mean. Um, so this would be the uh, the uh, mathematical format, the the maxima format for it. So we can just cut and paste that in, replace this. I guess it has to be the latest data because it is, after all, um, it, it does have this one additional entry. But let's let's see if we have a sum function here, a function that adds things together. Um, and I don't, I don't really know the answer to that. Let's see, do we have a mathematical? We don't have a mathematical session, a maxima session running. We could, 
but we don't. And then maybe I'll keep this one open from now on. And the README stream will tell me how to do that. Because uh, I'm too stupid to do it for myself. Okay, here we go. Yada, 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 something went wrong. Um, always fun. Uh, let's see. This. Oh, yeah. I always forget the semicolon, which in Mathematica means suppress the output, but in, in I was about to say in COVID, in Maxima is a required thing. So it's also a pain in the ass to get out of this, by the way. I haven't found a way. You can't control C or control D out of it. And if you kill it like that, uh, control Z and then kill the background process, you still have to foreground it again uh, just to get it, uh, just to kill it for real. Okay, now, um, argument cannot be a symbol. Okay, not cool. Um, do I need, I mean, I, I do define days at some point, but I think that's after the fact. Okay. Mm, something is not right. Let me, well, let's, let's go ahead and run this uh, without an init file, see what the hell's going on. Step one of debugging, just do everything manually, and it'll work, then you'll be really unhappy. So let's just do this real quick. Okay, so deaths, deaths be not proud, the COVID virus is going to die. So this should be okay, unless I've effed something up. Okay, I've effed, oh. Hmm. That's a formal variable, though. I'm saying that, um, hmm. Is this, oh, what? Oh, is that actually bad code that I left in there? <laughs> I'm so funny. Um, argument cannot be found. So is this, does this have to be a, uh, an array for this to work? Did I, is that what I discovered yesterday and now totally forgotten? Um, but I could have sworn every command in here worked. So L squares estimates. Well, let's just take a look here. Let's just see if we can uh, go over to the wonderful Maxima manual. Um, and I think I'm using the generic version squares. Est no, I am using the estimates version, um, which is L squares estimate. Su uh, oh, just elsewhere's estimates. Okay. Uh, so maybe I've... Here we go. I think elsewhere's estimates just chooses which... There it is. Okay. Um, the data D must be a matrix. So clearly... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, just dying of some current... Okay, so I don't think... I think this is wrong, which is really bad, but... Um, Okay, so that's actually bad because I thought everything in this file was working. In fact, I could have sworn I loaded this file and it worked before. Um, unless I forgot to save it? But I mean, let me just look at the, see if the GitHub version is any better. Because that would have the, um, actually it wouldn't, would it? Um, but let me just see what's going on here. Um, no... Yeah, no. It, hello, homomorphism, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, homomorphism is, of course, a uh, kind of mathematical thingamajabi. That it's actually a, a mapping from one set to another uh, that I think um, is the generic term is homomorphism. Well, what we're trying to do today is we're trying to talk about maxima uh, because I'm trying to move away from Mathematica because it's commercial. And uh, we're basically trying to use it to show uh, this is the COVID death data. We're trying to use it to show, I'm trying to use it to show 
that you can actually make a lot of models that fit existing data and, and you know, make any sort of claim that you want, but then also show how you can sort of debunk that a little bit uh, by, by saying if you had made this model three days ago, it would have predicted this number for today, and that's clearly wrong. That's a form of backtesting. Uh, that is the plan, but uh, things go pretty crazy. Uh, so um, uh, things go pretty crazy. So uh, you never know what's actually going to happen. Um, at one point, I had a picture of a mink up. Uh, I don't know why, but that that happened. So if you have any questions, comments, or want to talk about something else completely, I don't care because I am th I am that bored. Okay. Now for some reason. This worked yesterday. I think this worked yesterday, but but it shouldn't have. And I also get the feeling I'm missing a oh you okay, know okay. Uh, as like I said, feel free to interrupt any time. So okay, you know what? Okay. I think all of this stuff was up much higher which it should be. So I don't know how that got down there. I mean, that this has to be done first. And then, so apparently I had a file that was working yesterday and I broke it somehow. Uh, not too surprising, but that's how it goes. Okay. Um, and so this should still not work, but let's see. I think this will work. Oh, and also, L-squared's estimate, this has to be an array. So I don't know why the hell I have this here. I can't... Did it, I mean, it shouldn't have worked yesterday. But let's find out. Let's do this again. Um, let's go all the way over to here, which this should all be fine. Um, um, no, we're actually not trying to do that. Well, this is actually like an unrelated thing. Um, here's the problem that we have. This happens in Mathematica also, but keen eye that you found that C-spline and you immediately recognized it at cubic spline. Um, the problem is we have discrete data, and sometimes if, if we're going to create a, a function that looks like the data, our function will normally be continuous. Uh, so it's sort of a pain in the ass to compare, it's not impossible, to compare continuous functions with, uh, with discrete data. Uh, and actually, it's not that hard at all. I, in fact, I probably, now that I think about it, that's probably what I should be doing is taking the model, d you know, the model that I fit and take the data from that model at given points instead of trying to, uh, uh, it, what I'm doing here, though, is I'm taking the discrete data and making it continuous by running a, a simple spline through the arguments. Um, so this is not even about fitting. This is more about just somehow making this function continuous. I could have used a linear spline. Um, and the more I think about it, the more I realize I probably, uh, I probably shouldn't have even tried to make this continuous. This is just a very simple way of saying discrete data is continuous, so you can measure it at any point. Um, it's not tremendously exciting. I mean, this is the formula that comes out, which is hideous. Um, but it's not, it's not, ultimately, it's not interesting. It's just a very simple way of, of making the function continuous. Um, yes, yes, cubic splines um, have a lot of properties, and I think I'm just using them for the wrong reason. I'm a terrible person. I am abusing cubic splines. Okay, so now, let's see. So I think I actually ended up jumping... Well, luckily for us, we're using Maxima, which does... I mean, I probably could make a spline myself if I had to. But Maxima, like Mathematica, is very helpful in that it has a lot of functions that help you do this. And as you can see, the function is hideous. Uh, in fact, let me see if I can... Um, so I think it's f-deaths for floating point deaths. I think if I do fun info f-deaths, we can get what we need. And I think that's actually a function, or technically a functor. Um... Is it funk info? Uh, is it fun def? Feathers. I don't know why I typed in feathers. So that's that. Now we can actually simplify this slightly by uh, simplifying it by 
But I mean, this is just, a, and by the way, char, char fun, as you might guess, is the characteristic function that is equal to one between six and seven and is zero elsewhere. So this is just a piecewise function defined in a funny way. Um, so, so this is, again, this is something totally generated by Maxima. It's totally useless to us. Um, so I kind of feel bad doing it. But now, now we're actually going to do, this is bullshit. You know, I should probably, I'm going to go ahead and put this under the commented code of stuff that might be useful someday. Uh, but it's clearly not useful right now. Okay. So here we have the, um, if I, I think I've gone as far as this now. So list days is just a list from one to how many ever days there are, which I think is 104 now. Yep. Um, differences will just give you the... Um, Differences, well, differences is just a generic function that gives you um, the, you know, the difference between the second and first element, comma, third minus second, and all that. D deaths is the difference, is the number of new deaths per day. Um, and honestly, you could, I mean, again, I don't, I'm not making predictions, because I hate doing that. Uh, but the, n the number kind of has leveled off. We're, we're up right about 6,500 deaths per day. It's not getting higher. The number is not, I mean, it was really, really booming up right here where it's getting much, much higher all the time. Um, but right here, I mean, it still gets a little bit higher every so often. Um, but it's not, it's not, it's kind of leveling off. Um, the linear, yeah, that is another way to do it. Uh, to do a linear interpolation instead of a cubic interpolation. Uh, and I did that yesterday, actually, and it, it works fine. And actually, if you use uh, the plot function, um, there's two ways to plot this data. And let's let's take a look at, uh, you're really helping me a lot, because this is actually the kind of things I wanted to say. So let's look at, there's two ways to plot this data. Um, so let's just, first of all, um, let's see, I'll put it over here. Um, so, Okay, so because this is discrete data, you have to tell it that it's discrete data. And we're going to plot um, days versus deaths. So this is, as you might expect, going to be a, um, a plot that increases, you know, starting at almost zero to now we're up to about 108,000 deaths. So that's what this looks like. Um, we can also, uh, and by the way, when it does that, it does do a linear, uh, you know, it does, because it's only defined at certain points, but this, I think, is doing a linear interpolation here. Uh, actually, I'm not sure now. Let me, let me see. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. I think it is, though. Wow. I, I mean, because I'm not telling you to do any sort of interpolation here. Um, I think it's linear. I mean, that this is the default built into uh, Maxima. I'm not doing any, I'm not telling you to do anything with the data. Um, and then, Logi. This is a plot of uh, the log of, um, and see, these little step steins kind of make me think it is, I think, I think this is linear. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is linear now. And how the hell do I get, I always don't know how to get back from this to the previous uh, zoom level. Uh, oh, I, you know what? I figured it out once, and I need to figure it out again. Um, yeah, yeah. So the log, so this is the nice log plot here. Uh, again, I don't believe in predictive statistics, but here you can see this had a sort of linear, sort of came down, came off, and it came back up again. And I think right here is where, um, this is the low before it sort of hit the rest of the world. Now, I'm sort of seeing this as leveling off again, but I mean, um, that's you know that's something that the uh, that's something that we really need to uh, fit uh, fit data to. And by the way, if you're wondering how I'm doing a log y plot when some of the values are zero, I think uh, Maxima is just ignoring the zeros, uh, which is w what it should do. So there's that. Um, very shallow log functions. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but let's take I. You mean, I mean, we're only doing the log in the y-axis, not in the x-axis. Um, so, I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is tenfold increase right here. Every one of these is tenfold increase. 
but I'm not sure I follow. So if I were making predictions, which I don't make, I'm, I'm going to say this will ask them to off well before we hit a million. Um, okay, that's cool. Okay, so that's a log plot. That's a regular plot. It's a log plot. There's a third way to plot this data. Um, let's see. Let me let me actually put these here because these are actually interesting. Um, third way to plot this data uh, is to convert this into graphical points, and then I think you can just say plot to. This is not going to work. This is. I think this is wrong. I think I need to do one thing to change this. Yeah, I need to say draw. I think it's draw two D here. Because if I want to draw individual points, I need draw. Oh yeah, there it is. Right, literally right there. So here. Now I don't care for this as much, uh, because it looks like a scatter plot, and it's really hard to. T I mean, we know that it's increasing, but we, th that's because we happen to know about the function. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. My bad. Ignore that. Ignore that. Sorry. That's the plot of the differential in deaths. This is the plot of the number of deaths, which, which will increase. So that actually looks okay, because it's a strictly increasing function. Um, but when you have a function that goes up and down, it's hard to tell, because uh, you, you know, we, don't see where the we don't see the connection between the dots. Uh, so this is yet another way to plot it, is using, using just points. Okay, so now, um, I think this is one, the one that actually works. Uh, now, just as a crazy thing, I wanted to try to plot the uh, deaths uh, to the number of, uh, to, to a cubic function. And, th oh, unless, were you talking about this earlier? Because this is also a cubic function, now that I think about it. So this, it should give me the, uh, the cubic function ma best matching. Nope. That's right, this is still wrong. I keep forgetting, it is... I figured this out here. Where the hell did I figure this out? Did I lose something? Maybe I forgot to save this. Now for the cloud, this is we're nowhere near the climax. Uh, sadly. Um, God damn it! How did I do? Th I know this does okay. Wow. I had this working and I was being careful not to delete stuff. Did I put it in another file somewhere? I mean, there is a BC test one file, but I don't think that has anything new in it. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. Um, I And I could go back and look at my old stream and see if I actually somehow deleted useful stuff, but I was making a real effort not to. I mean, some of it I did put under comments because you sort of have to, uh, otherwise it'll go crazy with it. But um, this I know that well. Th I sorry, I just copied that there. It doesn't it doesn't work? Um, set plot. There's also a missing case where I actually get rid of the zeros. All right. I'm gonna try something here. Do not try this at home. Okay, this is the tilde file that Emacs keeps around. No. That's not it. Wow. I am gonna ignore Pomodoro because we have a guest in the chat, and that makes me happy. Plus, it gives me an excuse. Okay, I apparently had more stuff here uh, than I do today because I definitely remember having one. Oh, actually, I might have gotten rid of the thing that gets rid of the zeros because uh, the plotting functions and maximum, even when you do a log, can handle uh, zeros. Okay, so now let me remember how to do this correctly. D difference is death, day is okay. We've done this, it's all good. Oh, and we've done. Ah! Bad Emacs. Um, feeling spoiled today? Because uh, I'm not doing... Oh, yeah, because I have audience members? Yes, I love my audience members. Okay. Um, well, see, now you've just ruined it for me. It's late in Australia. Well, you know... How late is it in Australia? We will find out. I'm going to assume you're in Sydney or in, in the right, in the east part of Australia. Hang on. Is it 2.41.19 Australian Eastern Standard Time on Monday? It's Monday? Oh, yeah, right, because it's, it's tomorrow. Um, 
Now, if you're in Perth, you, you're in Western Australian time, which is some other stupid time. Um, yeah, Melbourne, Sydney, the East Coast, the Gold Coast, Canberra. Uh, there's that, Perth, and the rest of Australia is just empty, basically. Oh, well, I loved you while we had you. Okay, so now um, Matrix Day's death is almost what I want, but it might be in the wrong direction, and that we need to see what this is. Um, and I think I want the transpose of this, which is, yeah. So this is the matrix that basically says days, deaths, days, deaths. Um, oh, actually that was, uh, I was, I was, I was hacking that. That was a, that's a, uh, API called Wolfram Alpha. Uh, I was just trying to be cool and, um, it's nice to be able to do stuff like that on the command line. It's not very fancy. It won't, it won't give me... Um, I don't think this probably won't resolve. Yeah. So it's just a simple API to Wolfram Alpha, and many, many times it says either this or there is no short answer for your question. Um, I might be able to get this with COVID-19. No. And I mean, you could, we could keep going here. We could do like Corona deaths and it would eventually give me something, but, but th at that point it becomes pointless. If it doesn't really do it the first time, um, there's, you know, you should go do, do it some other way. Okay, so, okay. I, so that when you do the, tr so this is, okay. I could have sworn I did this. I'm getting paranoid now that I did this and it's gone. Um, anyway, I can redo it, and it's not that big of a deal. So we take the transpose of this matrix, and then we have um, a matrix that has two columns and many rows. So we will call each column x being the number, well, we'll say d the number of days. Oh, I can't use that number twice. Uh, i being the number of days, d being the number of deaths. Um, and then we then what we want is deaths are equal to a this this formula here in uh, okay I'll call this x here at x y and the the parameters are a b c and d and this should because I'm using exact functions uh, give me the best fit here I mean it won't but let's see why what what I've broken okay um mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to plot again, so we're just going to do this for right now. Probably should have suppressed the output there, which I can do. All right, so transpose matrix days death. I'm pretty sure that is correct. Um, oh, 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 yeah. I cannot use the dummy variable deaths if one of my lists is named. So we'll just say y. We're going to treat this as x and y. So y equals this. This should actually give me an answer. And there it is. Um, and and there it is in sort of a more um, in a different format. So this is not terribly exciting for multiple reasons. One of which is um, no one tries to model stuff with a cubic, not at least not something like this. But let's try to model it with a um, with a linear equation. And we should see something here. Um, and I get the feeling it's going to just whine that I C and D are not being used. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, which means they could be any parameters. Um, oh, you're still here. Cool. Okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, the problem is I haven't quite gotten to that yet. The problem is this gives me the parameters, but now I need to figure out a way to say, okay, parameters go back into function, um, which I've done with Mathematica. But the linear plot, at least, the linear one is, um, really? Negative 17,009. Mm, I'm suspicious of this. 
plus 557 times the number of days. Yeah, that... Am I... Am I, am I using d deaths again? Did I mess that up? Did I mean to use... Uh, no, it is days and deaths. Right, and that's something I need to figure out, by the way, is how to get, sort of get from this form of an answer to the, uh, to the regression to the actual function. And let me actually do this. Let me, I'm going to start declaring temp variables with, n this is the time in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and that's just, I've got a big clock up here that does that, so that's easiest for me. Um... Let's do this. Let's make this this matrix so we can actually look at it. And I actually do want to look at this real briefly. And I want to be able to triple click in Emacs. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. Something that bugs me about this is when I say matrix days death, that should have just gone. Oh. Um, yeah, I think I'm making this matrix incorrectly. I mean, it makes a matrix, but not the matrix that I want. Hmm. All right, thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you very much for thanking me. I, I think you just what, we just went in circles there. All right, thank you for watching. Have a good night's sleep and. Uh, uh, good day, mate. That's my Australian accent. Okay. So this looks correct, but the word matrix should not be out here. That is, that is not the right... When you create a matrix, uh, it should not have the word matrix in front of it. So let's take a look at the matrix function. The matrix function. Okay. Creates... Okay. Hmm. All right. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe that does. Well, let's just create. Let's just create one of their basic matrices here. Let's just do this. See what this gives us. Yeah. And see, the problem there is. Yeah, the word matrix shouldn't be in front of that. There's something wrong if I did that. That's what's happening. Um, so if I do matrix days death, I get this hideousness that... Um, I think if I do death days, it's going to be the same thing, though. It just reversed. Yeah, okay. Um, now we can fix that by doing... Um, you know, you could just use this like this. See if this is working. Okay, see, that's what we're supposed to get. A matrix um, like that. And now, is transpose not a function? Okay. Hmm. And again, that's what we're supposed to get. So, matrix days deaths transpose Yeah, the word matrix should not be sitting out here. Um uh, uh, well maybe 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 um, it maybe it, that's what it does in some cases. All right, let's make sure d days and deaths are the same length, otherwise we're, we're, it's not going to work. Okay. So maybe this is just how it represents a really... Let's, let's see. Um, okay. All uh, right, we could, of course, create much longer matrices using the um, the list creator function. But I'm just going to do this. Because I get the feeling there's something wrong here. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's just try it with a smaller subset of the, um, of the days and deaths list. 
So we will just say here T1051 equals, now the problem is I don't remember the, in Mathematica it's take, but let's see, can I take deaths 15 and get a 15 element? Y no. Um, I think in this case it's called first 15. Um, oh, first N. Okay, it's a kind of ugly, I, I admit that. Um, and so what we're going to do here is... Um, so we're going to create a matrix. First N days, I don't care, 7. First N deaths, 7. And let's see if that, and then we can see if that comes out okay. Okay, now if we transpose that, do we end up with this bizarre word matrix? Yep. Also, equal is not how you set things equal here. It is the colon sign. Oh, maybe that's what broke here. Oops. Still a bit weird. Um, the word matrix is still hanging out there, which I don't like. So let's do this, see what this does. Gorgeous matrix there. And now we can do a transpose of 10 T51. And we get a beautiful matrix that doesn't have the word matrix in front of it. But again, that might just be a length thing. So now we will go to 17. Still gorgeous. Uh, okay, still works. And maybe there's a bad data value in there somewhere. Now let's go to 37, 34. Just making that number. Well, it's double 17, so I guess it has some, some, some semblance. So what does this do? Okay, so now it's gone into the form where it has to say put column numbers in front of stuff. So maybe that's where it... No. I'm in screen copy mode so we can go back up and see. This is so it's still going to give this in a um, not in the word matrix format. Okay. Fine. Alrighty, let's try it with 68. I realize I'm going to do 64 because now I want to go in with binary. If I'm going to double, I should use binary pure numbers. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. So there must be like some breakpoint here um, where it decides to print a matrix like. And I'm not trying to find the breakpoint. I'm going to end up doing that because I'm just such a freaking moron, but. Hmm. Or I'm trying to find what the, the element is that breaks this, that turns this into a non list. Okay. 40 is fine. 40, is it the magic number 42? Uh, that would be cool if that's that's exactly where they decided to do it. No. 41, and then if you do 40... Um, okay. So that may be just a, a, a limit of how they print matrices. It's not really... I'm not really doing anything wrong. Okay. So we will put this into the wonderfully commented area, but of course that's going to get messed up, but that's okay. Okay, to transpose matrix days, deaths, T1047, X and Y are the columns, and we want to solve Y equals A plus BX for AB and, and not C and D, but that's not going to be a problem. Because that'll just, that'll just come out in the wash. Okay, um, that does not look correct, but who knows. Um, you know, actually, I mean, because it's such a highly nonlinear thing, this might be the best linear fit we can find. Um, so let me just do this manually real quick. Um, plus this. Ah! No, your mama. Okay, 
let me just okay and again this is not how you would do this normally this is just me doing a manual test here plus 557 that's almost exactly 557 uh, times let's say 104 it's still a bit low though um, it's like the whole estimation is uh, actually it's, it's hard to tell because um, yeah it's it's gonna be hard to tell uh, now I could of course do logarithms here but uh, there's multiple things going on here, so we want to kind of not take them this well, sort of one at a time. So the first thing we want to be able to do is, given that we have this output, um, convert it into an actual function. So let's go ahead and do that. So the L squares estimate um, we will assign to t10 t57. I think this actually will work, and again, it's colon not equal. That's going to be my biggest pain in the freaking ass. So 10 t1057. Um, Okay, and I think 10, this is a list, so I could probably take, like, element 4 of it. No, element 1? Oh, cool, it's a list inside a list, so I can do this. No. Okay. Okay, so unlike Mathematica, you can't really keep going on this. But okay, so this is what this is. Um, so now what we actually want to do here... Um, let's create sort of a generic polynomial of nth degree. Um, uh, so whenever we, we get this, we're going to say, we can't now use A, B, C, D because we don't know how many of them we're going to have, uh, but we can do um, and I've got to be careful because I want this to be a function, not a memoized function. So we can use sum A I better look at the I better look at the instructions. Um, so this is a sum, okay? Expression i i zero. Okay, that's actually not too bad. And by the way, when I say n, I mean nth degree polynomial. It'll have n plus one terms uh, because of um, uh, times x to the i. And like they might allow this, and they might not, because a zero is not well defined if a is an array, but it is perfectly fine if a is a hash. So let's see what they do this with. Poly want a cracker. Looking pretty good. That's not looking as good, but I mean it is correct. Poly zero. Wow, nice. Okay, cool. So now I can create an arbitrary polynomial. And um, now I want to create this list of coefficients. Um, and again, this is really just going to be make list a of i, i goes from 0 to n. And, uh, and the, you know, we should obviously be using the same n there. Coef list. Hello, Milkister Moo! And goodbye to m homomorphism. Thank you for joining the stream. I do not hate you, although... Um, Let's see if you've changed your name. You have not changed your name. It is Pomodoro time, but because you're here, I will skip it for you. Um, so the COEF list should just give us, like, yeah, that's exactly what we want out of the COEF list. Okay. Um, so now, of course, the idea is um, we want to be able to do things like, oh, hang on. I think we are okay with this. Uh, so T1047 is the matrix that we want. X and Y are the two parameters. There are always going to be two of them. Um, and here we're going to say Y equals poly of 2. And the coefficients are going to be coef list of 2. I don't know if this is going to work. If it does, I'll be fairly impressed. And it, oh, oh, God damn it. Okay. Uh, the word Pomodoro is actually uh, some language for, I think Italian actually, for tomato. 
Uh, tomato is offensive to Milk Istermu, as we discussed yesterday, because uh, he is liking milk. So I've used the word, the T word, too many times here, so I will stop using that, and I will not use the P word. Um, th but the next time it happens, I will just say the unspecified break. Non-fruit or vegetable related break. Okay. So now let's see if I can get the same thing out of this that I did out of the other stuff, which would be really nice for consistency. Oh, that is really nice. I like that. And now all I would need to do is do a substitution back into poly L. Um, I think. So, and by the way, if you're wondering what these numbers are in floating point, they are these. Uh, and again, I'm not sure how well this is going to actually match up with the real data. I know that a fifth order polynomial, for some bizarre reason, matches up really well to the existing data, or did yesterday, but it's a very poor predictor of the future data because it grows very fast. Okay. Um, so the next thing now is to do a substitution of poly n given this. So this is, this is probably going to have to look at this now. I thought there was a function called subst, but I'm probably wrong about that. Okay, no, that's not what I want. Well, there might still be one. Hang on. Right side for OK. In parallel, substitutes A for B in C. Um, so I don't know if we can do it using this element here, but let's see. So substitute um, Okay, so we're going to do it in poly n and we're going to substitute this may not work. Oh, subst is an alias for substitute. Okay, so it. Um, we're going to substitute. Well, oh, we guess we should name this. Um, I dubbed the T1103. So we're going to substitute in T1103 into poly n. Um, put in a. For, no, I'm sorry. We're going to do. Hang on. Oh, A for B in C. Sorry, 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 sorry. So it's going to be in poly N. We're going to substitute um, the list of coefficients with T1103. This is probably not going to work because I do not have the substitution set up correctly. T1103 isn't even um, isn't even something that you can use to substitute. However, I'm just sort of curious to see what happens. Okay, and now. The fourth argument minus the third argument must evaluate to a number. That's really cryptic because it only has three arguments. Um, huh. So that's really strange. Um, um, Okay, I'm, I'm kind of doing a parallel substitution here. All right, let's try something a little bit simpler. T1103 is uh, this sucker. So what if I want to substitute... Oh, and let's look at poly uh, 3. Or pole 3. No, poly 2, because we're doing squares. Okay, so poly 2, I want to say substitute um, A1 for... Uh, well, we'll just say it doesn't really matter. 1, 2, 3 in poly of 3. What does that give us? Um, I'm not in my happy place. Is it, This can't be right. Um, okay. I get the feeling this is not also the right kind of substitution anyway. So let us continue digging through the manual. Um... Substitute packed out by the OK. Oh, that's substring, not anything with OK. Okay. Let me actually I think there should be a section on substitution. 
Substitutions utility. That looks promising. Um, uh, maybe that's the only... Let's just see what else we have on substitution. Um... Okay, now I might have to actually understand something which is very dangerous. Um, but let's do this subst. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So let's look at some examples here. Um, so in this expression, replacing x plus y with a. Okay. And that looks correct. We have x plus y and then interestingly though this x plus y does not get substituted. Um, uh, for serial, okay. So the problem is we're trying to do multiple substitutions at once, not just one substitution. Um, we want to uh, substitute a0 with blah, a, you know. Um, now, I get there should be an easier way of doing that. I mean, like when you do a regression and you get your answers, you want to put them back into the function that you regressed into. Um, so not having that would be kind of weird. Oh, sub lists. Um, okay, that might actually be... Okay, let's look at sublist. That might be what we, we actually need here. That's... Oh, that's sublist. We're looking for sublists. Here we are. Make parallel solutions into an expression. Uh, left hand side, okay. Um, that's what we're looking for. So we want. This is not going to work, but but in a in a in a. Damn it! So what we want to do is we want to sublist. Uh, we want to do the substitutions given by t eleven o three into poly of two. This won't work because of a very special reason, but I'm actually okay with that. Um. Yeah. And the reason is because uh, T1103 is actually nested one level too deep. So you need to do this. Hey, wait a minute. That should be fine. Um, okay, that should have worked. Unless I misread the function um, into an expression. So this says do these into this expression. Um, mm, okay, well, let's just try something really simple then. Um, a of zero is A with a zero subscript, right? Yeah, okay. So let's just do this. Um, a of zero equals one a of 1 equals 2 into poly 2. Let's take a look at poly 2. Okay. This is very, very strange. Oh, oh shit, I did sublists. I meant to do sublists. Okay. Left hand side of the equation must be a symbol. Oh. And A0 to it is not a symbol. So that is annoying, actually. Because A zero is technically a, uh, a you know an array element or whatever. Okay. 
I don't think this is a thing in math. Yeah, it's not in 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 Mathematica. You would use that to do the substitution. Um. Okay. So the problem here is. Um. So if I did something like this. It would work in theory, but it won't work because there is no A or B in the poly 2. Whoa. What? The value 1 is not type of type symbol. Yes, it is. Piece of crap. Mm. Wait, are you saying I can only replace them with other symbols? Okay, well that did sort of do what I thought it would do. Um, all the A's became C's, and the, there were no B's, so nothing else got changed. Okay, groovy. Um, so now, oh wait, can I do? Oh, this is ugly. Can I do... Is it T1107? T1103. I don't think this is going to work. Um, actually, that got damn close to what I wanted. Let's do it now like this. Ah! Your mama. Um, T11031 is just, is this, um, and so it tries replacing A0 with the whole list, which is, so this is kind of what I want, yeah. Left hand side of an equation must be symbol found A2. Uh, well, let's see what you actually found here. Right, this is an array. So the real problem is A0 is not considered a symbol. Uh, so I can't really substitute, can't do this triple sub. Well, hang on. Let me just create a, a very simple. Now, the only thing I can think of here is if I do a flatten, but that shouldn't do anything. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mean... Okay, I do not want to do... This will work, I think, but I don't want to do it. Um, so I want to do evaluate T1103 and then say A goes to A. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. No. I'm glad that didn't work. Um, okay. Alright, so that's not how we do that. Um, so A0, it doesn't like the fact that I'm trying to substitute A0 is a... Um, is a parameter um, because it thinks of A as an array. Um, so what I want is poly2 and in mathematical we'd say poly2 given T1100 whatever the hell it was, 3? Yeah. And that is not um, Although I wonder now, could we actually reconstruct the polynomial with this, these given, um, now that we have these A's? Hang on. Um, so could we use T1103 to create an entirely new polynomial? Um, 
And that seems like it's ugly, though. Substitute. So the problem with substitution is it doesn't like the fact that... Um, oh, hang on. That's never going to work. Okay. At least we're getting closer. Not that much closer, but... Okay. Um... So what I really want, which is not working, but is the correct thing, is I want the T1103 substitutions, actually the first element of that, into the second degree polynomial. And still doesn't work. So A2 is not considered a symbol. That's the problem. Uh, what is T110311? Well, here's one. What's the one of that? Oh. So now the question is, can I do that? That would be just one of the substitutions I need, but... Okay. Oh, now first argument has to be a list. So if I put it into a list, it's going to now complain that it's not a symbol. Yeah. Okay. I can dig it. So we need to figure out a way to do this. That's a little bit better than this way. Uh, at war, we need to use a different kind of... Uh, Instead of using an array, we might need to use uh, a different kind of symbol uh, that that would work for this. And I think maybe that's the... Um, whoa, that's a variable. Um, so sublist is about the closest we get to substitutions. Let's see if this helps us any. So uh, make substitutions for operators in general. F is blah, 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 blah. Um, um, load up substrate, okay. Um, I don't know if this actually helps me any, because this seems to... Oh, this only works on operators. Um, so I want the opposite. I want, the, I want it to change variables. Okay. So we might be able to get away with using evaluate. Um, which I don't think is the right thing to do either. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's look at symbols real briefly. Let's see what kind of symbols we have. Um, uh, we probably... God, shouldn't there be a section on symbols? Expressions, operators, evaluation, simplification. There. Okay, Pomodoro time. And I'm doing it this time. Back in two and two.
and we're almost back and we are back so let's take a look to see how they what they say about symbols okay I mean we would call them variables oh Oh, that's not what I want, though. Um, so I guess this might be like basic syntax. Um, let's look to see if we have a um, subscripting might be what we actually want. Um, how do I create a subscripted variable? Ooh. Um, okay. Element of a subscripted variable is written to, before a list array of this name is declared, a hash array, not a list. That's not confusing at all. Um... Okay. So I... Ooh, shiny. My friend. Okay. Um, so let's see. This should be under lists. Ugh. Okay. So this is... Um, So the problem we're having here is with symbol. Let's just look for the word symbol here. I didn't see many instances of it earlier. Um, um, okay. Um, oh, so question mark here isn't even like Mathematica. It doesn't give you help. It just calls the... Um, the list version of the function. Question, question does do a describe. It doesn't help us here, though. Okay. Kill is the way to remove bindings. Okay. Oh, so that's how it decides whether to how to display something. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the um, the uh, interpolation, not the interpolation function, the uh, the fitting function, which is. Um, See if they have a way of doing this uh, intrinsically. L squares estimates. Okay. So. Okay, and they're using hard coded variables. The question is can you use. Um, can, oh. Okay, and I'm hoping one of these examples they use non-hard-coded variables. Um, ooh, residuals is actually kind of nice. Yeah, let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, take a quick break from what we're doing here. Um, L squares residuals if we map this as a uh, second degree polynomial. And that should work. Improper argument. Mm. 
Welcome back. Hey, you said the bad word. Um, I actually went and came, so to speak. Um, oh, hang on. For equation E with specified parameters A... Okay, so that... Right, right. That, that couldn't have worked the way I just did that. Um, oh, this is actually very different then. So... That's the list. X is a list of variables. Um, and so this would be... God damn it. Um, X is a list of variables, which is Y comma X. X comma Y. Uh, and then... Um, e is okay. So that's the po that's the poly two. That's the um, polygon I just created. The polynomial I just created. God damn, I'm losing my mind. And then T eleven o three would be the estimates that we're using to determine this. Ooh, I need to write that down. I also need to save frequently, I guess, because otherwise we're apparently bad stuff is going to happen. Okay, so those are presumably the residuals if we map with a, a second-degree polynomial um, after getting the best, the best fit estimates. I do want those, of course, as a float. Um, so according to this, somewhere in the middle it actually gets to be a pretty good estimator, but in general it's a very poor estimator. Of of this, um, <laughs> it's generally a very poor estimator of this. Um, so that's so that's actually good. The re residuals is actually really helpful. Uh, I still want to be able to create the function that this um, that this residuals give me gives me. Um, and okay, let me put a make a little to do here. Uh, we might want to look at the mathematical concept of modules, which means like functions that are like procedures, basically, because they can do more than one thing. And in that case, we might be able to just have it spit out the polynomial and the residuals and the, co it, the, whole, the whole nine yards, basically. Um, but for right now, uh, T1103. So these three numbers, we need to put them basically into, um, into the polynomial. Oh, this is interesting. Um, let's look at back substitution. Um, oh, it's an option. That's not what I want. Uh, expression substitution. Uh, not helpful. Um, string processing? No, that's uh, t something totally different. Um... Yeah, I think I actually already looked at what I wanted to look at. Well, actually, hang on, what is 10? Oh. Um. Okay, I get the feeling this is not going to work for a different reason. And we will look at that reason in just a minute. T1103. Into poly 2. This is going to say, Whoa, yo mama! That wasn't supposed to work. That wasn't supposed to work. Okay. How the hell did that happen? I was doing that and it didn't work. Maybe because I was doing with one? But I mean... Okay, now it's just going to be like... Unless I screwed up poly 2 somehow. Nope, poly 2 is still what it is. Mm. Okay. 
So I guess it's smart enough to realize if it's a nested list that it'll look the first element of the list. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, I'm still not sure why they didn't work last time. I could have sworn I tried this. Um, anyway. Maybe it, maybe I went directly to... Oh, hang on. Oh. I was trying to do this for some bizarre reason. Uh, which is idiotic. This is what I want. Substitution... Uh, substitute T1103 into polynomial 2. And this gives us a function in X. And now the, the bad thing is this X... Uh, observe... If I were to do, well, I guess we'll be consistent and call it f1133 of x is equal to this. How do I define functions again? Functions are special. Oh, set equal to. Okay. This should fail for a very bizarre reason. Um... Fundef f eleven b three. That's not what was supposed to happen, but okay. So if I say f eleven thirty three of let's say five, pretty smart, don't you think you are? Okay. I can I just do like of x? What does that give me? Yep, there it is. Um, so that worked. Didn't expect that to work. Um, so now I guess we could plot this function against the actual function. It's not going to fit very well because. Uh, Uh, did I do plotting yesterday? I did. Um, F goes from 1 to length of uh, deaths. Alright, so let's see how this looks. It's going to be a very poor approximation. Um... And then, just for comparison, the actual number of deaths as though it were a function. Why is that not working? Here we go. Should be two of these, right? Oh shit, it replaced it? That's not cool. So you can only have one GNU plot open at a time. So there's that one. Oh, that sucks. Okay, bad. Um, let's see if we can plot multiple functions at one time, uh, which would also be really useful. And that should be the function plot2d. Okay, so according to this, I can have a list of plots with the same... Okay, so I should be able to do... <laughs> so that should work. And we will see how bad the estimation is. Dun 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 dun! Why is this taking so long? Oh yeah, there we are. Um, the blue one is the estimation, the red one is the actual number. Obviously, as you can see here, this is not a great fit. Uh, we didn't expect it to be. It was... Um, it's a second-degree polynomial fit. Um, so that's not, um, not great. So now let's try... Um,
Let's try a um, fourth degree polynomial fit. Again, this is meaningless. We're just doing it for fun. Uh, let's see what this does. Okay. And then we define F1137 because we don't have, we can reuse that. Substitute T1103, no, T1137 with poly 4, into poly 4 rather, and this gives us our quadra a quartic, not quadratic, um, our quartic function, and we can now plot it against the actual function. And here you might see the power of polynomial fitting, which is of course totally unrelated to, um, it's just, it's just a coincidence, I think. I, let's see if it works first. Yeah, that's a pretty good fit. Um, so should we believe that, so this is the function that does a pretty good fit of the number of deaths from COVID from day zero to day 104. So now what happens if we apply it to day 105? Um, minus the ones we already had. So this says about 8,000. So that's actually not bad. That actually could work. Mm. Now, of course, the problem is, as this function grows to infinity, uh, as x grows to infinity, this function will also grow to infinity. But let me, kind of curious now, what happens if we go out like a, a year? What does this say? Probably very, yeah. So again, when, once you go beyond, you know, the, the quadratic, it's very, very large. So this is uh, 10 million. Uh, this is 90 million, this is 100 million. People will die within a year, and if you don't think that's bad enough, not that this is accurate, within 10 years, we will have more people dying than actually exist. And again, that's because the quadratic does not do a good job of modeling, um, the quartic, rather, does not do a good job of modeling the data. All right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're back. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do now is, um, this took us a few steps to get this done. Uh, can we create a single function? You give it a list, you give it a polynomial order, and it spits back out the approximate polynomial that you need. Um, now, Mathematica calls these things modules. I don't know if they're going to use the same terminology. Yeah, same terminology, they won't. 
but a lot of times we call these things procedures uh, um, or functions. Um, okay. Okay, and they're using the word. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so they are. Maxima is a database? What the hell? Uh, that seems interesting, but not what we're looking for. Um, so we want to know how to define functions. Um, so these are existing functions. Command line. I think technically a function is a type, but no, nope, but it's not. Um, elliptic functions, writing your own function. Is that just like down here? Um, Um, all right, let's see what the word function is in here. Mm hmm. And we've already written our own functions, but the question is, can we make them more fancy? Um, and apparently, God damn it. Oh, hang on. Functions, oh god, for help, no. I want just how to write a fucking function. I mean, I know how to do it, but how, what, what if it's really fancy? Okay, system variable, uh, which I don't think is helpful. This is all good stuff, but not the stuff I need. Kill, okay, yeah, 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 get on with it. Okay, we might have to actually... Whoa. Nope, again, this is just how to display stuff. Okay. Um, so th the, the question we have here is, if you want to call a, a maxima function, and in the function you want to declare a temporary variable that doesn't set global variables, can you do that? That's how we would sort of do what we're trying to do here. Um, Groups, numerical integration, limits, um, rules, and patterns might be useful sets. Oh, I'm an idiot. Function definition. Um, so that was pretty stupid of me. All right. To define a function, you use the equal operator, like this. Um, oh. Oh, they have lambda. I love lambda. Why is my cursor not highlighting? What the hell? Um, I got so excited that I broke them. Oh, okay. This is a local file, dude. Now, let me reload it, but you can't break on a local file. Let me see if I'm still streaming, but I mean, that has nothing to do with it. Um, yeah, I appear to be live and excellent. So how the hell are you not being able to pick up a local file? The only way I can think that might happen is if the SSHFS mount died somehow. Okay. Um, whoa! Psychedelic, man. Um, okay, that was just weird. I don't know what happened. Okay. La oh, yeah, this is what I was getting excited about. The Lambda operator. Um, let me just cut and paste this. Does exist. We need three exclamation points there, by the way. Um, that's the right number for... So we can declare anonymous functions, which are really, really, really useful sometimes. Um, 
And in fact, I think that could, in theory, you don't even need temporary variables if you use lambda functions. Okay. Um, this is the var args, essentially, which is all, ooh. Block and return, very nice. That one's going into the bin. Um, so block is, I think, what what we're looking for. That is that is how you execute a block of code. Um, so now the question with block is um, the first is okay. Aha! There we are. Okay. There we are. This is how. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. So I think block is the big, big thing I was missing. Um, so now, uh, let's call this, um, list to poly, because I love naming things like this. Uh, let's call the list not L, but list, because L is kind of hard to read. Um, order. Uh, which is the order of the polynomial. And then we will say, so we need to look at the block function a little bit more. Um, and for right now, we, we're not going to, we don't know if we need any uh, variables. Um, so the first thing we want to do is, um, actually, let's see if we can just do this. Um, and I think with block, you just, they're just going comma, 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 chameleon. All right. Uh, so the first thing we do is we define poly to be a, um, a polynomial of, uh, the order degree. Oh, hang on. That has to be N. Okay. So the first thing we do is this. Um, oh, wow. There's a maxima mode in Emacs. That is so awesome. That is the fucking coolest thing in the world. Um, okay. Then we need to define a... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if we need to define a uh, coefficient list. So this is just going to be a poly... Um, this isn't a function, so we could do this. Uh, okay, so where i goes from zero to n. Okay, um, good deal. And I'm trying to see if I can get away without having to, to name the coefficients. I don't think that I can, unless. I mean, in theory, I could extract them from the polynomial. Uh, so let's see what polynomial functions we have. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Um, Okay, so we could suck out the coefficients manually, but I mean, it's kind of silly because we just declared them. Uh, so coefs is going to be <laughs> how did I find our, there we are. Make list A of I I goes from zero to also N, where N is the thing we just had. Uh, and then, um, 
Okay, let's see. So we have the list. Okay, so because we're getting a list here, we actually do need to create um, indices. Uh, because we don't necessarily, the list is going to be a list, it's not going to be a matrix. Um, so that's going to be how I created days here, make list. I, I goes from... Um, I think it, this is going to happen. Oh, fuck. Uh, no, this is okay. This is okay. One to length list. Um, then we need to create the make. You know what? Let's actually let's actually slow this down a little bit here. Um, let's return the matrix of that is the indexes comma the list. So this just creates indexes for our list. Um, And I think I need a sem. Do I need a semicolon after the last block? Da, 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 da. No, I just need it after the block itself. So if this works, and this should be a standalone, actually, it doesn't need anything else to run. So let me um, kill Maxima, rerun it, and if this works, I'll be fucking impressed. Okay, let me try one that isn't stupid. Okay. That's not bad. <coughs> um, and we actually want to do the transpose of that, but that's not a big deal. <coughs> Actually, because this closes off the block, this should be down here. It probably should be like, well, no, it's fine like this. Okay. Okay, and I maybe want to suppress the output because it's getting kind of ugly. Wait. One, two, seven, five. You know what? Let's do something more. This abuses only me. Okay. And now we have the uh, the matrix that we actually want, which is one to the, the num. I can't I point to the screen. Numbers going down here, and the values going down here. Okay. So then we can feed that into. L squares estimates of this transposed matrix. Um, these are dummy parameters here, but we'll call them X and Y and say Y is equal to poly, uh, the polynomial we just created, and cofs. So this now, if I don't return from a function, I wonder if it just gives me uh, the last thing that I that I evaluated. Let's find out. Okay. And I think just because it's getting really obnoxious, we're going to end it with a dollar sign, which means suppress the output. Hopefully that won't suppress um, any error messages, because that would be bad. Okay. That should have done something, though. Okay. L squares estimate transpose the matrix. X and Y. I guess I could do a return here. Uh, maybe that's what this needs. You, OK. 
okay. I think that was just okay. Okay, something is wrong here. L squares estimates and so no 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 no. Y equals Hmm. Did I call the function incorrectly? L squares estimates. Um Okay, that's the first argument. Y equals poly. I mean, we could, in theory, just put over here um, Y equals this, but I mean, at some point that gets silly. Now, we should not have poly defined. Good. Because it is a private variable inside this space. And actually, I should probably do that. Oh, hang on now. I think I screwed that up. Yep. I also need cofs. and indexes to be private. That shouldn't have affected the result, though. Um, maybe it did. Maybe it's trying to use the global value or something. But anyway, this is what I want. Okay. So, now if I do this, yeah, okay, uh, I want to solve x, y is equal to this function of x, where x and y are given by that matrix, and the, uh, the variables are given by that, and yet, this does not work. Um, I wonder if it has something called input form where I could actually break this, the thing that I'm getting back, break it down, uh, and then re-enter it as input um, instead of giving the um, giving the display form like this. So let's take a look here. Mathematica calls it input form. Nope. Uh, display. That just looks kind of weird. Um... Oh, hang on. Are we back? No, we're not back. Um, okay, this would normally be Pomodoro time, but it is also me getting tiredish time. Not really tired, but um, I do want to look at this alternate display here. Um, but I th oh, this is ma that's nice. This is MathML here. Um, but let's see. There should be like a a form that you could take the output and put it as an input, uh, but this worries me actually that, we, that we're not getting this to work. Um, uh, length of list. So this, 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 unless I'm missing something very basic, am I using x in, no, um, you know what I might be. No, this should be fine, because this is actually a polynomial in X. Um, anyway, if someone wants to figure this out for me, go for it. But for now, I am ending the stream. Thank you for watching.